With that, let the game begin. Green light! Red light! Now these are the list of the literary works of Navarra. Poems, Coloriana, Kaadlawun, Kanimo Presing, Mga Tapos Na, Naghulat, Nagsilag, Pagbuot Sa Langit. His short stories, Iyang Kitara, Panimalus, Sulat Nga Binuksan, Tao Sa Ilalom Sa Sunata. And... His notable award, Tungod sa Kahayag, first story published in Asud, 1931, Og Gianud Ako, known story and a prize winner. Before we jump to our story, let me first give you a brief introduction. So one of the treasure of Philippines is literature. We have different literature depending on the time it is written. One of the best examples of literature that is historical and shows reality is The Clay Pipe by Marcel Navarra. It is a story originated from the Region 7 or Cebu region. It depicts how Filipinos lives in the hands of Japanese where World War II is happening. And Philippines is much affected from the war. So please listen attentively and enjoy. See you. Summary of the story Malta built a fire, but instead of cooking for breakfast, she sat crossed legged with a clay pipe in her mouth. While holding her clay pipe, she thinks of how they would survive with less food, eating only twice or once a day. She also thinks about the seven soldiers guarding the cliff, and she remembered that today was their turn together with six of other neighbors to provide breakfast. Malta went to the house of Tiroy Sipa to ask for a bowl of cornmeal for one soldier as additional supply. Then she runs to Peli to barter her two chickens for corn. 
After she has done cooking, she carried a fishing creel basket to the soldier's camp, camp site that contained two small pots. One is the cornmeal and the other is vegetable soap. Soup. She also brings a roll of young tobacco leaf. While waiting for the other volunteers to arrive, Malta twisting around to find a comfortable position and took a chip from the burning wood and putting it in her clay pipe and went back to squat. Her eyes wandered to the soldiers inside the hut. The soldiers who had requested to roll off the buckle was playing Dhamma with the other soldier. Suddenly, Malta is alarmed with sudden firing of a gun. Turning her back, she saw that it came from the soldier and aiming it toward the sea. Malta wanted to protest the firing but was afraid for the sailboat. After a while, when the tension was gone, the other soldier asked Malta about a beautiful, charming, and friendly girl. He is very interested and says she's in love, he is in love with that girl. Their conversation was interrupted by the arrival of the three volunteers carrying heavy baskets. The soldier began to eat and volunteered are asked to join with them, but they refused because they already eaten. Malta was about to say something, but she just remained silent. There were times when one could afford to forget hunger, but that moment when Malta stared at the abundance of food. When the soldiers finish eating, Malta asks if they are going to throw away the leftovers and Beg asks if she will feed them to her dogs. The soldiers let Malta bring the leftover while in her mouth was the clay pipe which had nothing within except ashes. Now let's get to know the characters. Malta, the main character of the story and the wife of Imok. Imok is the husband of Malta. Tura and Tarino, the children of Malta and Imok. Lieutenant Mingoy is a guerrilla officer. Sepa, residents of Ipata, neighbors of Malta. Piroy, husband of Sepa. Tiban, one of the soldier and guerrilla. Is a group of soldiers. The clay pipe theme was about a family who didn't have much and demonstrates the kindness and courtesy to their guests, providing food for the guests even though they have no food on their plate. They often help their Filipino soldier find food and shelter, opening up their own homes to provide a temporary home whenever necessary. So, this exhibits the natural hospitality of the Filipinos. Even before, Filipino has always been accommodating towards guests. Filipinos receive guests, even strangers, in a warm and pleasant way, often going out of their way to make the visitors comfortable. Being hospitable is not confined to the upper class and often be found among the poorest members of society. Too hospitable isn't good at all. Also, according to some critics, this story, Clay Pipe, depicts the reality of the poor people who don't want to be recognized as poor.